How to judge people's salvation with 100% accuracy. I'm going to prove it to you in this video. Take a few minutes to look at the scriptures, see what the Bible has to say about this very important issue. We'll start out here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You can turn there in your King James Bible. Make sure you're looking at the scriptures and uh, not relying on your own opinions. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll begin in verse 6. The Bible says here, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. In other words, that wisdom that's there is based on people's opinions, not on the scriptures. We speak the scriptures is what the Bible's saying here. Um, verse 7, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Spirit searcheth what? All things? Will that include other people's salvation? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. For what, know, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Look at the verse. What man knoweth the things of a man? I can't know the things of you unless I have the Holy Spirit to guide me. That's why it says, save the spirit which is in him. You can understand, my Holy Spirit that's in me can bear witness to the Holy Spirit that's in you. That's fellowship of the Spirit that's supposed to be there as Christians. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. All right, the Spirit of God will reveal these things to you. Verse 12, Now we, re we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Is salvation freely given to you? Yeah, salvation is freely given to you. My dog's going a little bit crazy here. <laughs> um... Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We have the scriptures and the Holy Ghost to guide us into the truth. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, look at this, judgeth all things. You see the word all there. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay? I can't judge somebody else's salvation. I don't know who's saved and who's not. I can't judge anything. Doesn't it fall under the word all? Verse 15, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. I mean, you know that you're going to go to heaven when you die if you're saved. You should know that. At least I would hope so. You should have faith in what the scriptures say. Do you know how to go to heaven when you die? You say, well, I know, but I can't judge anybody else. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. You can't say, uh, well, I know how to get to heaven, but if somebody else tells me how they're getting to heaven, I can't say one way or the other if it's true for them. You know, Well, then you don't really believe in the standards of scripture. You see, we can judge things according to the word of God. That's the solution here. Somebody comes up and they say, I've done this and I do this and I do that and I don't have this. Well, then I'm just judging my spirit in terms of just the, the, my fleshly understanding and, and whatever else. That's all I'm doing. But if I compare what they say to the scriptures, then I can judge them. Pretty simple. 1 John chapter 5. Well, yeah, but I don't think we can know. I think we're all just trying to get to the same place. Well, if you're trying to get to, to some place, you're going to be ending up in hell with all the other uh, good people that end up there. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. The Bible says, the Bible says, not me, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. 
He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now look at this, verse 13. One of the key verses of Scripture for a Christian in the entire New Testament. 1 John 5, 13. Um, we can't really know for sure who's saved and who's not. 1 John 5, 13. Take a heretic to this verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that you have eternal life? You, oh, yes, I do, but I don't know if other people do. You take them through the scriptures. You know, I mean, I have dealt with this thing so many times over the years where I've seen people that did not look like they were saved. And, you know, and I just kind of think, you know, maybe they just got saved and they they're still have some major issues to take care of. And you watch them and things. You look at them over the years and you, you go through the scriptures with them and you know, do you believe this? Do you believe that? And, and whatever else? Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, yes, I do. Okay, well, then according to the scriptures, according to what's written, you're saved. There you go. And those people turn out to really surprise me, and they, they really end up great. Other times I've seen people, and I think, well, they have to be saved. I mean, they really get their act cleaned up and whatever else, and they just eventually go right back to the world again, get messed up, and say, I, I never believed it. It was all just fake for me and things. So you can't judge according to just my feelings or my emotions. I don't like the way that, that woman's dressed over there. That guy there, I don't like him. He just looks kind of weird to me and, and whatever else. Um, you can't judge that way. All right. The judgment has to come from the scriptures. Somebody comes up and they say, I'm a Christian. You say, oh, really? Are you born again? Born again, John chapter 3 through the Pauline epistles too. I did a whole study on the thing, are Christians today born again? You get hyper dispensationalists. They say, well, you know, they're, they're not, we're not born again today. And it, yes, we are. There's the new birth. Uh, that's there. I have a whole study, you know, proving it. But um, you get this thing of people coming and they try to tell you about that they're saved. You say, are you born again? What does it mean to be saved? You take them through the scriptures, the standards of scripture, and then you can say, okay, according to the scriptures, not according to me, according to the scriptures, what, based on your profession of faith that lines up with the scriptures, that matches the scriptures, I believe that you're saved according to the scriptures. I'm judging your salvation. They say, well, brother, I'm really having some struggles. I'm really doubting some things and whatever else. Okay, um, are you saved or aren't you? Do you believe 1 John 5, 13? Well, yeah, but I'm just not sure. No, there's no yes, but. If you believe what's written, you are supposed to know that you have eternal life. And I can know that you're being serious. Well, somebody could come up and they could lie to you and they could deceive you and whatever. Oh, okay, the Holy Spirit will bear witness to that. And if he doesn't right then and there, he will later on. That's why the Bible says that you're not to lay hands suddenly on a man. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. All right. You're supposed to test the spirits, try the spirits, whether they are of God. Um, let's go to the next verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. Out here getting eaten alive by mosquitoes <laughs> and uh, little sand gnats. They're out bad right now too. But I wanted to be outside um, doing some videos today we had some stuff to do at the property so i thought hey we'll come here um first corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4 moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved not being saved like the catholic bibles like to put you know in different portions of scripture ye are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain there's a lot of Gnostics out there that they believe, they envision that they're saved and they, they believe things and whatever else, but there's no calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. I mean, Romans chapter 10 is crystal clear. It's belief and calling. You call upon the Lord because you believe. It's so simple. A child can read it and understand it. But you get these Gnostic devils come along and they try to mess you up. And they say, well, when it says call with the mouth, you know, confess with the mouth and things, it doesn't really mean that. It's just another way of saying believe from the heart or something. It's nonsense. Okay. You can believe in vain. And you can call in vain too, by the way. 
say a sinner's prayer and whatever else because you're in some service and they're mind controlling you to pray it along with everybody else that's praying it or whatever else. But you have that two-part system there, believing by faith and calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And, and God, you're calling out in faith to God asking for his grace. By grace are you saved through faith. That's how it works. It's not that difficult, but people try to complicate it to mess you up. Um, verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see it there again. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. And, you know, and then he goes on to say some more people there. But the whole point is, what is it that leads you into salvation? What is the true thing that you're putting your faith in? You say, Jesus. Well, yes, Jesus, but you don't know about Jesus without the Scriptures. These things have I written unto you. You see, it's not just a matter of, well, the Holy Spirit makes me feel this or that. Does it line up? Does this Holy Spirit in you, does it line up with the Scriptures? It's Scripture. Okay, uh, I can go to the my one of my vehicles and I can take out the registration. It's registered. It's in my name. I have written proof that that vehicle belongs to me. This is written proof that you belong to God. So somebody comes along and they say, hey, I'm a Christian. I praise the Lord. I saw your bumper stickers. I like your ministry. I say, are you a Christian? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. And I look at them and I think, okay, well, maybe they just got saved. They look a little... Don't really look very separated here or whatever else, but you know, okay, maybe I'm just, I don't know. Um, I'm not going to judge them based on that. Uh, are you born again? Are you, you know, what have you done to be, you know, what do you mean you're a Christian? What does that mean? Tell me your testimony. I want to hear it. And if they're saying, well, you know, I was born and raised in a church and I've just been saved all my life and I've been saved since I was a little boy and I just praise God for your ministry, brother. You're doing a great job. And th I think, uh-oh. And I say, well, you know, um, so you watch the ministry? Yeah, I, I really love your ministry, brother. But, you know, I, I don't, the one thing, if I could just say this, I'd, I wouldn't be so crazy on the, the Bible version issue, you know, the King James Bible. There are other translations I think are good, and you shouldn't try to seek, brother, you know, seek to split people up on that, and it's kind of a divisive thing or whatever, and I start to go, uh-oh. Um, and, you know, I do have some Catholic relatives, and, you know, I think that they're saved. I mean, I understand you have your issues with Catholicism, which I think you should take it easy. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. <laughs> And then, you know, I'm seeing some other things and I'm thinking, mm-hmm, and before long, uh, yeah, you're not saved. Well, who are you to judge? How can you judge? Uh, because I have written scripture that you're supposed to line up with and I'm supposed to line up with. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Might be better off if I go out into the sunshine, I think. Uh, so the bugs don't eat me alive back in here underneath the trees. Um, First Peter chapter 1, verse 23 through 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God. It's lowercase w. It's not Jesus speaking about it's talking about the written word you'll see it here in a minute which liveth and abideth forever you say well it liveth and abideth forever it's living it's jesus it's talking about jesus keep reading for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away but the word of the lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you it's preached unto you it's talking about this book can you judge somebody's salvation? Well, the Bible says you can judge all things. That would include people's salvation. See, one of the devil's tactics is he gets people into these church buildings and, you know, it's all about getting the members in and, you know, let's just get these people in and, and you can fake it till you make it. You eventually become a Christian be, by th learning the right things to do and whatever else. And, and um, it's not really a destination. It's more of a journey, you know. And... Uh, and they'll do all this stuff. They'll deceive you. 
into thinking that oh, we none of us should judge other people. We're not supposed to be judgmental. Let's just be let's be calm. And what they're actually doing is they're drawing people in to make merchandise of them. I mean, you can you can make a killing in Christianity. Let's just be real straight about that. You can make a lot of money. All right. Huge amounts of money in Christianity. So you get your big church building in there. You want to fill the pews with people. That's why you have to kind of tone down the judgment stuff. You don't want to talk much about sin or other things like that. Let's just kind of tone that down a little bit here, brethren. <laughs> yeah. But the reality of it is um, you're supposed to preach the word. And I will always stick to this standard that if you see some guy preaching online, preaching, and he's not holding the Bible in his hands, and the King James Bible specifically, uh, I'd run away from that guy. I'd get away from him. Well, I just feel and I just think, I, you know, the way I've learned it over the years, and uh, I don't care about what you think. I don't care about what, what uh, little lessons in life, pretty little things. What's the Bible say? It's according to the scriptures that I can judge your salvation. And you can judge mine. Finally, let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 21. We'll start there. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. What is it that gets you saved? It's the engrafted word, the written word of God. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You're to be a doer of the word. You're to live according to the scriptures. This is supposed to be your rule book. And if you don't do that, you are deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For behold, he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Um, Christians fall, Christians sin, Christians do stupid things. Yeah, I get it. But you know what? Um, I've known Christians that uh, ruined their lives through fleshly, carnal, stupid things, and yet they still had a good testimony. And yet I could still sit down with that Christian and I could say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, yeah, saved. I know you're saved. Uh, boy, you really messed your life up, didn't you? Uh, really made some big mistakes. But that Christian still had a, a great testimony. Uh, knew a PBI graduate the one time that uh, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of details because I don't need to bring up his personal details. But he was a missionary, had on the mission field, uh, committed adultery, ruined his, his marriage, got divorced, had to come back to the States, uh, humiliating. Uh, some of his children got into drugs and um, he married uh, someone that he shouldn't have married and uh, turned out to be a deceiver and a liar to him and whatever else. And she passed away. And, and when I knew him, he was just a broken old man. Um, but uh, still believe the King James Bible, still had the right testimony, fellowship of the Spirit. He actually, um, I requested prayer for my wife back when she first you know, contacted the ministry many years ago. Uh, we were not married or even thinking of marriage or whatever else. And he, he kind of smiled about the whole thing. And he said, I just said, you know, told her a little bit about what she was telling me. And I said, I'd like to request prayer for her. She asked for prayer. Uh, she's, you know, wants to, get saved and whatever else, wants to understand uh, the Bible version issue and all the other things. And he just kind of grinned and he said, sounds like that could be the one. He prophesied my future. Uh, he was in fellowship with us at the time and, uh, and he prophesied the future. And I ended up marrying, you know, my wife. Uh, so yeah, there's fellowship of the spirit there. I don't doubt that I'm going to see that guy in heaven. But boy, he messed his life up. And he'd tell you he messed his life up. He'd, oh, it's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong or whatever. No, he knew. He knew. So, um, can you judge somebody else's salvation? Yes, you can. Absolutely. And when I hear professing Christians and they make this statement, you know, I can't really judge who's saved and who's lost. I think, you know, you're going to these church buildings and they're 
deceiving you on purpose with all that stuff. So as I got a big mosquito flying around at the lens of the camera. <laughs> so the joys of uh, preaching outdoors. But that's going to be it for this study. Don't fall for this stupid nonsense teaching that you cannot judge other people's salvation. You absolutely can. I just gave you the scriptures that prove it. He that is spiritual judgeth all things. All things. Don't forget it.